What's going on guys? This is the official start of our West Coast road trip. I am so excited. We're here in San Diego, which I haven't been to since I was like a little child, not a big child. And I'm with Jody and Jody's friend Becca for this road trip and it should be fun. Lots of travel, hopefully some good photography and mostly just fun. So yeah, let's get exploring. It looks like Jody's excited too. San Diego has been on my travel photography wish list for some time now. It seems like it has a little bit of everything. A cheesy, fun, old, historic town, some cool neighborhoods and food, and some seascapes. It's the perfect way to start this West Coast trip. Okay, so let me give you kind of a quick preview of what's going down over the next couple weeks over what this series is about. It's been on my travel wish list to do like the whole West Coast of the US for ages. And we have a little bit of time here so that's kind of what we're going to do. We're not going to do the entire West Coast, but we are going to go from San Diego all the way to Portland, following the coast as close as possible. So I'm stoked. Yeah, I'm stoked. Off camera, I've already crushed about four tacos and have wandered to tourist spots here in town. Now, at sunset, I'm ready to get my feet wet in some photography. We've kind of just been exploring all day, being tourists, wandering around, and kind of semi-location scouting. And on my map, I saw a place called the La Jolla Tide Pools. And I thought that that'd probably be a good place for sunset, as good as any. It's low tide right now, and yeah, there's a couple tide pools, and not a whole lot else. So it's gonna be maybe a little bit of a mission to make a photo, but I'm gonna try to make it happen. I think the coolest part of San Diego is how brushed it is against the sea. Look in one direction and it feels like a perfectly secluded beach. Look the other, and the city's right there. It's a perfect blending of city and nature. And I'm assuming it's an awesome spot for locals to ply their trade as it seems like there's endless options for photos here. But as a visitor, I'm struggling to find a composition. Remind me if I fall on my face, I'm not gonna look at you as I talk because it's slippery as heck here. When I come to locations, like the beach or tide pools, I'm looking for some sort of defining feature, some sort of element that's essentially just not beach. The beach is hard and kind of boring to photograph. So I'm always looking for rocks or colors or shapes. And there's tons and tons of really, really beautiful colors and shapes here. You've got this really green like algae, I guess, on the, on the water. You've got all these pockets on the rocks but it's so, so slippery here, and the tide is so low that it's hard to find something, you know, where there's some crashing water or some, some a little bit of drama, so I'm struggling. Okay, I think I found my spot actually. And I think this will work. It's not the type of photo I was thinking I was gonna shoot, but I like it. You do have town there, so it's not a classic landscape photo or seascape photo. It's more of a travel shot, but you have this beautiful green seaweed or, or algae or whatever it is there. You get these crashing waves like this, jumping up and hopefully not splattering the lens too badly. And then when it retreats, you can see it creates a little bit of a waterfall effect off that side. And then the retreating water creates a cool effect as well. So I think this could work as long as I don't get smashed by a rogue wave. So I'm gonna go put my camera gear somewhere higher and try to make a photo. Fun fact, despite all the crazy situations I put myself in, I've never had a piece of camera equipment, aside from maybe a filter, lost to conditions. If you're smart about how you get set up, where you ditch your camera bag and stay tuned to the environmental conditions, you shouldn't have problems. That said, you never really know. As a photographer out in the conditions, you have to go in with the understanding that poo happens. Just do what you can to avoid stepping in it. Or, you know, in a tide pool or something. Okay, four things really quick and ignore the fact that I'm not gonna look at you as I say them because I'm watching the sea because I don't want to get hit by a rogue wave. One thing, I fell. I fell really bad and smashed my shin and ripped my jeans. I'm okay, but it hurt. Second thing, 
I feel like I read the tide charts wrong because the tides seem like they're coming up and they're supposed to be going down right now. The waves and the swell are starting to blow in and scaring me a little bit. Third thing, as I'm gonna look away, see this? Get one of those. It's a shower cap that I stole from the hotel. Shower caps in places like this will just save your lens. They'll save your camera. If it rains, you get have waves that are splashing. You get a little bit of sea spray. That'll all really help. And fourth thing, I think I've got this photo figured out. I just need to wait for the sun to come down a little bit. If you don't smash your shin shooting seascapes, you're probably better at walking than I am. As for the photo, yeah, I got this locked down. But in seascape photography, you're stuck in the whims of the seas. You don't control the ebbs and flows of the waves. You don't have any power over the surges and swell. It's all about patience, finding the right exposure, and sometimes spraying and praying for a cool looking moment. I think I found mine. Okay, we're gonna carry this log on till tomorrow, but a couple things. One, that was a lot of fun. I feel like it's been a really long time since I've shot some seascape photography, and it was fun to kind of throw myself back into it. In seascape photography, sometimes you slip and fall. That's kind of part of the risk of it. Sometimes you get hit by a wave, but it often leads to such good photos, it doesn't matter. I don't know if the photos were great today, but I had a lot of fun doing them, making them, even if I fell. Second of all, not so fun, not so cool. Along the tide pools, there's so many scratch bits of rock where people have carved their names into them or hearts, like J plus L forever. It's not cute. It's totally disrespectful to nature and the people that are gonna come here after. It shows just a total and complete selfishness. If you go to nature places and you carve your name into rocks or you stack rocks even, something as simple as stacking rocks, that's destroying nature and it's showing selfishness. It's showing that you are more important or you think you're more important than this nature. But these marks, those are gonna be there forever or for you know thousands of years and it's just sad that people do that. So if you do do that, you might have made a mistake and please stop. And uh, like I said, we're gonna carry this video on until tomorrow and uh, we're gonna try to shoot some more tide pools somewhere here in San Diego. We all make mistakes. The gods know I have to. So don't take this as judgment, maybe just a plea to try to be better. Same as I'd hope you hold me accountable as well. We are the kids of the summer sun. Don't wake us up until the dream is done. We are the kids of the, we are the kids of the sun. After adding a couple more tacos to my taco count, I caught some Z's and headed back out to another location in the morning. Okay, it's morning and I decided not to go to the tide pools this morning just because, well, I shot tide pools yesterday. It seems silly to do it twice. I'm at Pacific Beach Pier, which is off right that way. It looks like you can actually stay there. I'm not sure if they're houses or guest houses, but it's pretty cool. I'd never been here before. And uh, yeah, this is this morning's photo location. And as Forrest Gump might say, that's all I got to say about that. I mentioned a couple of videos ago, and again, I'm watching the sea as I do this because it's about to come up. Yikes! <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta ditch the tripod in the ocean. I mentioned a couple of videos ago that I'm trying to be a little bit more minimalist with my photos, and this is a great spot to do that. You have all this pier, you have all this ocean, and it just leads for a really nice long exposure photo with the color in the sky. Not getting any color yet, but it looks like I'm gonna get some blues and some purples. Now, I'm also following a rule of composition, which is the rule of odds, the rule of threes. You've got three of these cabins out there. You've got like dozens of these cabins up there, but these three cabins at the end, if you just grab those, for whatever reason, odd numbers look better in photos. So they're at the 
like far left of my frame and then I've got the frame leading across into the sky. So we're gonna wait this out and uh, hope the camera doesn't get swept away to sea. The exposure time of a photo can drastically change an image. I'm hoping to minimize the scene. And a longer exposure does that. Making a 30 second photo stills out the water and puts all the focus on the pier disappearing into the horizon. A shorter long exposure, done right, can create leading lines in the water pointing out at your subject. Neither are wrong. They just serve different purposes. Okay, so I think I got the photo I want. In fact, I think I got two photos I like. Uh, a really long exposure with the sea totally washed out, and then a shorter exposure with kind of lines in the sea that look really cool, kind of match the top. And the surfer's just gone into the water and the swell has gone crazy here. There's some huge waves right off the pier. So I'm gonna try to keep shooting and hopefully get a photo of the surfer, but the light, the color has kind of died down in the sky. Um, but there's still some purples and blues, so hopefully this works. Um, and for that, I'm gonna put on the 100 to 400. Starting to think that guy doesn't actually even surf. He just goes out there to float in the morning because it's beautiful out there. Because I've been sitting here watching for like, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes and he hasn't caught a single wave. But you know when you're a kid and you go to the beach and your mom or dad or primary caregiver makes you wash off your feet? You gotta do that with tripods too. When you get to the beach, you gotta wash the salt off your tripod or you end up like I often do with legs that don't open because you forget to do that. Just noticed that I forgot the outro of the video there in San Diego as I'm finishing up the edit on it. San Diego was awesome. I loved San Diego. I think it's such a cool city with so many, it feels like lots of different cities actually. It feels like a bunch of cities wrapped into one and I love that about it. There's lots of really cool photo locations right there as well. So I'll need to get back to San Diego and spend a little bit more time there. As for the future, you can see I'm no longer in San Diego. I'm up in the Pacific Northwest where you can see my breath. And the weather's not as nice. The road trip that we're doing is pushing all the way to Portland, so eventually you'll see the content from the whole road trip on the way up. So if you're not subscribed, get subscribed. There should be some fun content coming up from the coast of the US, and then later on, beyond. So um, that's it for now. I guess I'll see you next time. Peace.